You're listening to Release Your Resistance with Bex Beltran, episode 55. Welcome to Release Your Resistance. This is Bex. The only reason why any of us don't have what we want in life is because of our own resistance. Right now, I'm learning how to recognize and release my resistance, and this podcast tells you how you can release your resistance so that you can live the exact life that you want. Let's get started. Welcome to season two. Did you miss me? I miss talking to you every week, but I have been thinking about you the whole time, thinking about what you're wondering about, thinking about what I want to tell you and what I want to share with you. I've been thinking about the ways I want to make season two different than season one. I have a whole list of topics and episode titles for the rest of 2021, but as often happens, I am deciding to take a little detour from that plan to follow some inspiration that has come to me recently. Speaking of inspiration, I am floating on a wave of inspired action right now, and it is exciting and motivating and uplifting, and I want to share it with you. I hope you can feel what I'm feeling and get some of this for yourself. In fact, if you have missed me for the past few weeks and want to make up for lost time and hang out with me even more... I have the perfect opportunity for you in February that I will mention at the end of today's episode. But let's talk about today's topic, intangible generosity. This topic came to me by surprise, even though I was actually the one to plant the seed for myself a few months ago. Here's what happened. The other morning, I was journaling and I flipped to a new page in my notebook and I saw that past me had written a prompt for me to answer. The prompt was, how can I be generous and abundant today? First of all, (laughs) I don't know where past me got that prompt. If it was just an inspired question, or if I found it on a list of journal prompts, or if a previous writing session generated that question, I have no idea. But it turned out to be the most amazing writing experience and has now even resulted in this episode for you. Secondly, if you are pressed for time or just feeling antsy and ready to go and take action right now, you could actually turn this episode off, please don't though, and go answer that question in your own journal, and this episode will have already paid for itself, right? Do you see how thinking about how you can be generous and abundant today is such a valuable use of your time and your energy, and it has so many far-reaching and long-lasting benefits. What a perfect example of an empowering question, right? Seriously, if you do decide to pause now and answer that question before listening to how I answered it, I would love to hear what you came up with. So maybe you can share it on your podcast. I'd listen to that. Or you could email me or just tell me about it next time we hang out. And thirdly, Let's just get right into it. I want to tell you what that question brought up for me, what I realized, what it made me wonder about, what I researched as a result of thinking about it, and how I have implemented what I came up with. You will hear my ideas about how you can be generous even when you don't feel like you have anything to give, and you can practice intangible generosity in your life to see how it feels, and to find out what you get when you give. I have a question for you. What do you think about, or what's your personal definition, of the words generosity and abundance? When I thought about generosity, I thought of sharing or giving freely with no agenda and no expectation. And noticing that definition I came up with for myself made me wonder If something can still be generous, if there are strings attached, for example, if someone gives you money 
for a specific purpose, or if they share advice with the expectation that you will implement that advice. Is that really generosity on the giver's part? If there are strings attached, is the generosity actually self-serving and therefore no longer generous? And here's where I contradict myself a little. Is generosity the same thing as altruism? I don't think so. Altruism is doing something that benefits someone else at a cost to yourself. And sometimes when we give to others, we end up costing ourselves that resource or that benefit. But I think we also get other benefits or other intrinsic rewards as a result of our generosity. So maybe it's okay if it's self-serving in that sense. And going back to that morning with that writing prompt, when I saw it, I was bought in. I believe in generosity. I like thinking about and feeling abundance. So when I read the prompt, I was immediately on board until some resistance started creeping up for me. One of my initial resistant thoughts when I saw that writing prompt that morning was something along the lines of, I have nothing to give because I had been feeling particularly depleted up until that point. And when I rolled that scarcity thought around in my mind a little and checked it out, I realized, no, that's not it. I know that I have so much, but figuring out how to give and how much to give and who to give it to seemed like it would take a lot of energy. Ooh, did you notice that? second appearance of scarcity right there. Hello, resistance. (laughs) In exploring those two offers of resistance from my own brain, one that I had nothing to give and the second one that it would take too much energy to be generous, I stumbled upon my generosity misunderstanding. I was equating generosity with tangibility. When I thought about how to be generous, I was thinking about something a little more traditional and maybe specifically measurable. Like I could give money to an organization. Um, I could go through my house and I could find useful things that I didn't want or need and I could give them to someone who does need them. I could donate my time or my services. And those are all true and they are generous and the list doesn't stop there. But my misunderstanding was thinking that the list did stop there that those were some of the only options. And when I realized I was just believing a misunderstanding and I corrected myself, my mind opened up. And that is when I started to understand intangible generosity. Before I give you examples of intangible generosity, let's just stay on my resistance a little longer, just in case your brain offered you some of the same objections that mine did. What's the opposite of generosity? Stinginess, greediness, selfishness? Maybe depending on the context, all of those apply. What I really think it boils down to, the opposite of generosity, is probably rooted in scarcity. In my case, my initial resistance to thinking about how I could be generous was thinking, I have nothing to give. Classic scarcity. And the second resistant thought my brain offered me was, it'll take too much time and energy, implying that there is not enough time and not enough energy, which of course there is. So again, scarcity. It might show up for other people in thoughts like, but if I give what I have, there won't be enough for me. Or there's only so much of this, so if I give it generously, then it'll be gone. And of course, when you are thinking and living in scarcity, you just attract more scarcity. That's what your brain is focused on and trained to recognize. But when you can break out of that habit or pattern or mood and see possibility and openness and abundance, then you get more of all of that. So what if, like me, that morning, you think you have nothing to give? Maybe you're thinking, I'm empty. I'm exhausted. I have nothing. Notice those are your thoughts. Maybe they are true. Maybe you believe them and are committed to believing them. I am going to gently push back and say, 
maybe those thoughts are not 100% true. And wouldn't it be better if they weren't true? When I considered my own resistant thoughts that I had nothing to give and no energy to figure it out, and I realized that didn't feel great, I wondered if intangible generosity would be easier, or maybe it would be easier to overcome my scarce thinking around the more familiar kind of generosity in that moment. And I just want to point out, my mind did not immediately jump from, I have nothing, to, oh, well, I guess I could think about intangible generosity. I didn't even think of that phrase until after I had already come through the whole experience and then looked back at it and realized I could organize all these examples into a named category because, you know, I love to organize things and I give all the credit for this exercise to having previously learned the benefit of asking empowering questions. I described these a little in the breakthroughs during coaching episodes. So if you listened to that and you learned about empowering questions and you're now using them and considering them, you get credit too. That morning when I saw that journal prompt and noticed my own scarce thoughts, I asked myself empowering questions, which were the opposite to those scarce thoughts. What do I have? What can I give generously right now? How is my life so abundant right now? My brain went to work answering the new questions instead of continuing to find examples of how I have nothing and how I feel depleted and how it would be too much energy to figure out what to give in my current state. So here are some of the examples of intangible generosity that you can consider for yourself. The first example is compliments. This reminds me of one Thanksgiving when I stopped at the grocery store after work on the Wednesday before, probably the worst day and time to go to the grocery store, I was rushing around, darting between people, grabbing what I needed, afraid of forgetting something, and in the frozen food section, a woman commented on my necklace. She told me how lovely it was and how it set off my eyes perfectly. Wow, what an unexpected and sweet compliment. Amazing. And then, as I kept rushing around the store, she kept catching my eye, and I noticed her talking and commenting to lots of different people. I overheard little snippets of other compliments she was giving out. What was happening? It was interesting and unique, and I'll be honest, I wondered if she was doing it as a dare, or if maybe she was a little crazy. And then when I checked out, as I was leaving the store, I saw her give a man a bouquet of flowers. I had to hear this, so I purposely slowed down so I could eavesdrop as I passed. She was telling him she had seen him with his girlfriend and thought they were so beautiful, and she wanted him to have something beautiful to give her. Oh, so sweet. And if I hadn't experienced that whole thing for myself, I wouldn't believe it. It sounds made up and exaggerated. No one acts like that in real life. Who has time for that? And the story is a little over the top, but it is 100% true. But it's also a perfect example of the generosity of giving compliments. It's possible that at least 20 other people shared that experience with me that Thanksgiving Eve of being randomly complimented by a stranger and noticing her complimenting others. I still have no idea what she was up to, but it made my day. It probably made other people's day. Maybe it's making your day right now to hear this story all these years later. And I am 100% sure that complimenting lady had a blast. And I know she felt amazing after that experience. The next example of intangible generosity is attention. This is one I want to work on when my husband talks to me when I'm already engaged in something else. Wouldn't it be the most generous thing I could do in that moment to put aside what I'm doing and generously give him my undivided attention? And this goes for any activity. How generous would it be to give our attention so fully to whatever we're doing in the moment? 
driving, working, spending time with people, enjoying our food. Last night, I was scrolling on my phone, and he started talking to me, just random chit-chat, not asking me a specific question or telling me something specific to me. And sometimes when this happens, ugh, I half listen, oh, and I give little sounds of acknowledgement while not really paying attention. But last night, because of this new intention of generosity, I remembered that I wanted to put my phone down and turn my body to focus on him. I have plenty of attention to give, so why not give it generously? The third category is information or education. And this is one of my favorite ways to be generous. I love sharing what I know. I love teaching. I love finding and researching information that I know will be helpful to someone else. So if you are an expert at something or a crazy fan of some topic, how can you share what you know? How can you be generous with your knowledge? And full transparency here, being generous in information and education is One of the reasons I am back here with you today for the start of season two. I hadn't planned to start back for a few more weeks, and I hadn't planned to detour from my outline topic schedule, but as many of the topics on this podcast are, this is just too good not to share, and I didn't want to wait to tell you about it. And along the same lines, the next category is entertainment. Don't you love being entertained? I do. And when I think about how I can be generous in entertainment, it includes telling a funny or interesting story, making someone laugh, sharing an entertaining picture. There are so many ways to be generous in this category, either spontaneously or planned and scheduled. (laughs) And my favorite current topical entertainment this past week has been scrolling through all the Bernie memes. Have you seen these? Seeing all the creativity and cleverness of how people are photoshopping the picture of Bernie Sanders at the inauguration into movie scenes and other cultural scenarios. I am feeling generously entertained. The next category is affection. What kind of things fall into the category of affection? Of course, with your partner, you probably have intimate affection, so that's one way to be generous. But you can generously show affection to other people in your life, too. To people who you're close to, a touch, a hug. And for strangers who you don't even know, just even eye contact and a smile. All of that can be a form of generous affection. For the sixth and seventh categories, I will combine them together because while you can differentiate and come up with specific distinct examples for each one of them individually, they are pretty similar. They are help and support. I've noticed some very generous offers of help recently as we've been renovating and moving. I am touched when I've been at the hardware store trying to load something heavy like tile or drywall or shelving unit onto a cart and a stranger who doesn't even work there, will generously go out of their way to lend a hand. During a time that we're all keeping our distance from each other, it is touching to see someone stop what they're doing to come over to help with something heavy and awkward. And I have also been the grateful recipient of so much generous support from my friends and family in the last little while. So many people offering to help, sending thoughtful gifts, ordering food, just checking in with a text message. This display of generosity is a great example for me and has been so supportive. I've also been the grateful recipient of so much encouragement, which is the next category, from my coach recently. As I was working through some of my own thoughts and beliefs, I could see I was being hard on myself, but I really believed those thoughts. I thought those standards were necessary and required Of course they weren't, and my coach's generous encouragement for me really helped me to consider alternate ideas and other perspectives that I didn't have access to on my own. Her encouragement gave me some beliefs that I could borrow from her until I believed them for myself. And finally, the last two categories are ones that I am really working to be more generous in, not only with other people, but with myself right now. I'm looking for examples of how I can be more generous in these areas when I don't really feel that way. And I'm combining these two together 
also because they are similar, and I don't want to talk too much about them in this episode. They probably each deserve their own episodes. They are forgiveness and unconditional love. Forgiveness is an area where I am trying to be more generous with myself. What if I could be so generous in my forgiveness of myself? What's the harm? And when I think about the alternative, I see so many benefits of being generous in forgiveness to myself and to others. In fact, this one doesn't seem altruistic at all. It seems more self-serving to me than to whoever I am deciding to forgive, which is why these two categories go together. Let's say there's nothing to forgive. So I just decide to generously love, which is the final category. What if I could just love someone unconditionally, without expectation, without an agenda, without demanding anything in return? What if I just decide to love without condition? Again, it seems like I am the beneficiary of my own generosity in that case, and I'm okay with that. Just coming up with these topics that morning on a day that I wasn't feeling especially generous or abundant made me instantly feel more abundant. I knew I could be generous in all of those areas. I started thinking about how and with who and when I could be generous. My hope is by hearing about my experience and how I see these examples of generosity in my life, you will consider them for yourself in your life as well. So now you have a handful of examples of intangible generosity to choose from, and you might have thought of other examples for yourself. What if, for the next 10 days, you practice intangible generosity along with me in one of those areas? What if you came up with your own personal list of ways to be intangibly generous? You can be generous even when you don't feel like you have anything to give. You can practice intangible generosity in your life to see how it feels and to find out what you get when you give. I want to hear how this works for you. What did you realize as you were listening to my examples and experience? And what are you thinking about trying for yourself? And before we go today, I want to remind you of one way that I am practicing intangible generosity in the information, support, and encouragement categories. If you've just started your business, or if you're thinking of starting one, or any new endeavor, really, I want to support and encourage you. One of my favorite things to do is business brainstorming. I love getting excited with other people about their plans and ideas, and I love helping them research and build and plan on those ideas. So in February, I am facilitating a business brainstorming and accountability group. It is going to be so helpful and so inspiring and fun, not overwhelming or frustrating at all. You can join me on Tuesday evenings. It's going to be amazing. So if you want more details or if you're ready to sign up, just go to bexb.org slash B-B-A-G. So that's B-E-X-B, my website, dot O-R-G, because I like to organize things, slash B-B-A-G. That stands for Business Brainstorming and Accountability Group. And that is it for today. I am so glad to be back with you here in season two. I really have missed talking to you each week. So thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Have a great week and I will talk to you next Friday. This has been Release Your Resistance. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, make sure you're subscribed and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Also, think about someone who you know who would love this episode and share it with them. There should be a share button on your app if you're listening to this on your phone. If you'd like to continue this conversation one-on-one or in real time, come visit me on my site at bexb.org to see how we can work together. 